Hello? Hi. Hi, Steph. Um, so I'm Desi. Um, and we haven't quite gotten started yet, but welcome. Thank you. And I'm Joseph Sylvia. I'm from Westminster, Massachusetts, which is a suburb of Fitchburg, so that you guys know where, where it is. Hello? Hi, Stephanie. Hi, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good. Um... I can't see you, but I can hear you. Oh, yeah, so we're still uh, waiting for people to get in and um, on the screen right now, I shared the beginning of our PowerPoint presentation that we'll be doing and it says hashtag teach disability history and there's a collection of old photos um, and so those photos uh, top row the first photo is a group of people sitting outside um, it uh, the president is signing the Americans with Disabilities Act the second photo is of a, a two black men one is seated in a wheelchair and that's Brad Wilmax in the wheelchair and his brother kneeling next to him. The photo next to that is a president uh, FDR sitting in a wheelchair with a young girl standing next to him. Next to that is a photo of Justin Dart, who's a white man seated in a wheelchair with a cowboy hat on, um, shaking hands with, I believe, that's Jesse Jackson standing. Um, the second row is a photo, a black and white photo of a brick building. It's uh, Gallaudet University. The photo next to that is a, a woman standing behind a chair. It's Harriet Tubman. The photo next to that is a black and white photo of a group of people. Most are seated in wheelchairs uh, in a room during the 504 sit-ins. And the photo next to that is a of people crawling up the step, cap, U.S. Capitol steps. Um, and that is the Capitol Crawl event. And so should we, uh, should we get started? Sure. It looks like most people are in. A couple more are coming in now. We can wait. Um, should we be... Um, spotlighting the um the ASL interpreters in some way. Sure, I'll do that. Okay. Oops, <laughs> bringing in a few more people here. All right, let me do that. Where did she go? Okay. Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Hello, I'm one of the interpreters for tonight. Hello. And so, um, and for our group, I will spotlight you. Um, actually, I'll spotlight all of us right now. So we're just there. So it's not confusing. But um, the interpreter, do you know if that will mess anything up if I add um, other people to the spotlights? Or should I just spotlight one person at a time? In my experience, it doesn't uh, mess up anything. It's only that the people will see all of the the spotlighted videos. 
Okay, thank you. We're going to bring the really over and stand there. Um, <laughs> the back's over there. There, I can move this. And uh, one last thing before we get started. Have I spotlighted everyone in our group that's going to be speaking? Hello. You forgot yeah. me. Oh, there you are. I was going to say, I don't see Adner. Yeah, what's perfect is right oh. when you spoke, you popped up on the front of my thing. So oh, I don't know if you've added me yet. Um, This is Stephanie Desi. Um, Richard or Desi, my mom is not having any luck. She's in the waiting room. Well, I'm going through and letting people in. Okay. I don't know if I've been spotlighted. Um, so Joseph, I'm just, are you going to be speaking tonight? I'm just spotlighting the people that are. I don't speaking. mind. I don't mind speaking. Oh, well, we have a presentation. That's why I spotlighted the people that are part of the presentation. Okay. Well, um, that's part of it. Yeah. But after, after we're done with the presentation, we are going to, we're going to open it up for everyone to, to talk. I'm open to presenting. I mean, I mean I'm open to you, to the presentation and. Speaking of that, I'm open to whatever whatever you plan for. Great. I look forward to having uh your hearing your contributions at the end. All right, well, it's um 6:34, so why don't we get started? Um hi everyone. Uh my name is Desi and I'm the youth program manager at Easter Skills, Massachusetts. And I'm here with uh a incredible group, our uh, hashtag Teach Disability History Campaign Committee, and they are going to be telling you about our Teach Disability History Campaign. Um, and I, uh, on the screen, I'll go through it once more. There is a slide, and it says hashtag Teach Disability History, and there's a collection of old photos. There's a photo of the signing of the ADA a photo of Brad Womax and his brother, a photo of President FDR with a young girl, a photo of um, Justin Dart, a photo of Gallaudet University, a photo of Harriet Tubman, a photo of the 504 sit-ins, and a photo of the Capitol crawl. And so for our group, and that's the group that's spotlighted, um, when it's your turn to speak, and I'll let you know if you want to just introduce yourself. Um, and if you want, you can say how long you've been involved with the campaign. Um, all right, so let's can we kick it off with Stephanie? Um, hello, I am Stephanie. Um, who, who we are, um, the hashtag dis teach disability history campaign is led by a group of young adults with disabilities working with Easter Seals, Massachusetts. Easter Seals is a nonprofit whose mission is to provide equal opportunities for people with disabilities to live, learn, work, and play. Dream Disability Rights Education education i don't know what that word says activism activism mentoring is a a neutral organization for by college students with disabilities our work is to support um sponsors for college students with disabilities based at higher 
disability ahead. Good job. Um, the other interpreter is in the waiting room. Can you let her in, please? Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. And the um, the last bullet point just says that you can learn more by visiting their website, www.easterseal.ma.org or www.dreamcollegedisability.org. Awesome. Um, Yes, thank you, Debbie. Hi, everyone. My name is Austin. I've been involved with the campaign in 2019. And now this is the video to tell you more about why the um, campaign committee since it is so important to have to teach, to teach disability history. Thank you. At Easter Seals, Massachusetts, we've been working on a campaign to hashtag teach disability history. To tell you more about this, here are some of the young adults working on this campaign. Hi, my name is Nathan. Hi, my name is Austin. My name is Anita Griffin. My name is Stephanie. My name is Elizabeth Gray. My name is Matthew Jameson, and I'm a young adult with a disability working with Easter Seals, Massachusetts on a campaign to hashtag teach disability history. The goal of this campaign is to spread awareness about the importance of teaching disability history in schools. Please join us in these efforts by educating schools about the curriculum. You can play your part by also using the hashtag on social media to share why you think it is important to hashtag teach disability history. I think it's important to teach disability history because oh. it will promote understanding, awareness, and acceptance. I think it's important to teach disability history because it's good for the schools to educate students and faculty so that they are aware of some of the obstacles that people with disabilities have to face. I think it's important to teach disability history because it helps students and teachers in the classroom know that people with disabilities can overcome many different challenges and that if you have a disability it's okay and there's people that you could still succeed in life. I think it is important to teach disability history because as a society it is our utmost duty to educate people with and without disabilities to understand how the disability movement got started how far we have come and how much more there is to do. I think it's important to teach disability history so we'll have a more inclusive society. I think it's important to teach disability history because knowledge is power. Cody, we can't hear you. Yeah, um, so history 
Aurora campaign over 10 years ago, years ever came to get the governor of Massachusetts to sign a proclamation making October Disability History Month in Massachusetts. This was a great step in the right direction, but did not mandate that initiative be taught in schools. In 2019 years at Easter Seals, again joined with advocates by writing letters to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that about the disability history curriculum, the great fight for disability rights. These efforts help push to make this quick um, available for free to all masters and teachers, but the work still continues. And on the screen is a black and white photo of uh, people crawling up the steps of the U.S. Capitol building. Hmm. Anna? Hi, everyone. So my name is Anna Weinberger. I am part of this uh, committee as well. I've been here for um, at least a couple of years. So what is, what is disability history? Disability history is the experience, journey, and oppression those with disabilities have experienced in the past. Including the advocacy and push the disability community has done and continues to do for equal rights. Every culture has its own history, and people do not often realize that disability is a culture. Tatiana? Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Tatiana. I've been with East Seals Teach Disability History since 2020. What is Teach Disability History? The goal of Teach Disability History campaign is to spread awareness everywhere about the importance of teaching disability histories in schools. In the video, you heard why we think it is important to hashtag disability history. We also want to educate teachers and students in Massachusetts about the curriculum, the fight, the great fight for disability rights. As well as Amer engaging American reform to equal rights. Thank you. And on the screen is an image of the logo from the Reform to Equal Rights curriculum, as well as the DVD cover for the Great Fight for Disability Rights. Abner? Excuse me. Hi, may... Sorry. Uh, we need to switch, but I can't add the other interpreter. So can you someone, someone unspotlight me and spotlight the other interpreter, please? Yes. So one second, Adam. And who is the other interpreter? That would be the name Mindy, M-I-N-D-Y.
I oh, can do I that. I get it. I get it. Got it. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, all right, Adner. Hello, everybody. My name is Adner. I'm, this is my first time being on the, te on the hashtag Teach Disability History Campaign. So let's talk about what is the campaign committee. The hashtag Teach Disability History Campaign is a, it's led by a committee of disabled young adults. The committee helps to move the campaign forward by meeting regularly to discuss upcoming events and ways to spread the campaign's message. The committee presents both in person and virtual, virtually across Massachusetts and beyond promoting the importance of teach disability history. The committee is also continually working to push legislation supporting disability history by advocating and meeting with legislative officials. Thank you. Sam? Hey everyone, my name is Sam. I'm the Youth Program Coordinator with Easter Seals and I'm really happy to be here today. The importance of our campaign. One out of every four Americans has a disability. Wow. Currently, the only state that have any type of legislation that disability history be taught are California, Maryland, Virginia, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Even with this like even with this legislation, it is often not enforced or built into the curriculum framework. Our campaign aims to help change this narrative. History are moments in history that could be overlooked. Thank you. Andrew? Hello, my name is Andrew. Um, teach disability history. Get involved. Do not listen to spread the word about teaching disability history. I share on social media why I think it's important to teach, teach disability history. And on the screen are a collection of photos of people smiling, holding signs that say, I think it's important to hashtag teach disability history because. And under that, there is small writing that they put why they think it's important to hashtag teach disability history. Anna? Uh, so hi, everyone, again. So now it's time to play a game called Kahoot. We will be playing a multiple choice game to learn disability history facts. You will need a device such as a cell phone or to open a new window on your internet. This is how you will answer the questions. If you do not have a way to play on your own, that is okay. You can team up with someone else. Go to the website www.kahoot.it. From there, you will see this window. We will now share the code for you to put in. And remember, we are here to have fun and hashtag teach disability history. Thank you. So now we're going to, um, I don't know if people here have played Kahoot before, um, but I'm going to set my computer screen up so that we can um, share that. And during the game, people are welcome to unmute themselves, to talk. Um, we like to keep it fun during our game. Uh, that's a great question, Rich. So we're actually going to be projecting that onto the screen. So once she's able to pull it up, you should be able to see the game pin, and you might be able to scan it if you have a device that you're able to scan QR codes with. I can also, um, on uh, in the chat, put a link, um, a direct link to join the Kahoot, 
And if anybody would like me to read the number out loud, the pin is 476708. And I can enlarge, I just enlarge the QR code if anybody wants to scan that. I also put it in the chat, Desi. I was just going to say that. Thank you. I also put it in the chat. Yeah, the link that I put in the chat brings you directly to the game. So you don't even need the pin. Awesome. Thanks, Desi. How's everybody day going? Busy. It was good. I did some catering from seven thirty to five thirty at night. Ooh, that's a long day. Yeah. Where? What your name and what? Uh, who do you work for? I just do it for some volunteer work at uh, my college. I have one more class, and my name is Sarah. Um, um, I went to the same school as Stephanie went to at Riverview School. Oh, nice. Um, and a couple of other people that are known here. From but what year like, to what year? I, uh, what? You're in to your name on the train. From what, what year to what year? Uh... 2000... I think nine and ten. Went from twenty sixteen through twenty nineteen. Oh. Um yeah, so I have one more class and I graduate with an associate in early childhood education and a certi certification in special ed. Awesome. Congratulations. Are we ready to that's awesome. Are we ready to start this game? Um Yes. And, that's good. Uh, question. Yeah. Um. Um. Is there? Um. I'm trying to get the uh, Kahoot uh, app on uh, on my phone. Uh, it, it will accept the name, but uh, only getting a blank white screen on my on my phone. Did, oh, did you, you can just go to the website Kahoot.it. Yeah, uh, I I tried doing that, but it's. Yeah, it's only, I, it's, I, I didn't get that the name either. It, it it's only giving me a blank screen. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Can you can you try from the device that you're using Zoom on? If you um click on this link that I just put in the chat. Name pin, what was the pin? Um, Four seven six. Yeah, I typed it in, and I can't get past my name either. Hmm. And you tried clicking on this link that's in the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's how I got there. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll try one more time. We're able to get in. We still want for you to. Share your thoughts as we're playing. Does that work? I don't know. Let's see. All right. Let's, let's get started. No. All right. Stephanie, can you read the first question? I sure can. What does ADA stand for? Um... What does it find? Our our architectural demands demands act. Um, a adult de device to act. Um, uh, to act. Um, Americans. Dedicated. The 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 say the arts act. 
Americans with Disabilities Act. B. And on the screen is a uh, photo of a button, and it says, I heart ADA. I would say blue. Adults decide to act. Uh, that would be funny. That, that's just a rough guess. I have no idea. <laughs> So the answer was Americans with oh. Disabilities Act. Interesting. Okay. Signed into law in 92, right? So that'll be a question coming up. Um, and uh, Anna, do you want to read this fact about the ADA? Yeah, sure, Desi. So the American Disabilities Act. The ADA is a civil rights civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities in all areas of public life. And on the screen is a photo of the actual ADA document. Wait, next question, Austin. Okay, what president signed the American with Disabilities Act in the law? Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Jim, Jimmy Tyre, and or Abraham Lincoln. George Huber Walker Bush. Um, I would say uh, that's tough. Um, I would say Bush Senior. You are right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, we have to wait till everybody answers before it goes to the next question. And then if you're not sure, don't feel bad taking a guess because you know the only way that you figure it out is find it out. <coughs> there it is. Cody, can you read the next question? Yeah. This, oh, I know this one. This. The cat. No. No. Hang on. This. This. A boy. Make cat. To this, us, the disability, visibility, Stephen King, Alice, Wong, J.K. Rowling, or Stephanie Mayer. B, 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 B. It's not Stephen King. Blue. This is the interpreter again. Would you be able to switch the spotlight over to Maria again? <laughs> J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. The author of, the author of Harry Potter. <laughs> this is the interpreter, Mindy. Could we switch the spotlight back to Maria? Oh, sorry. I thought it just it did just switch. She's, she's did it honest. Switch? She's okay, spotlight perfect. now. Thank you. Thank you. Only that I'm spotlighted and everybody's out. <laughs> oh, I'm still here though. Everybody's here. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Um. Okay. Awesome job, everyone. And uh, the photo that was on the screen is um is actually it's a different book. It's called uh, My Itty Bitty Bio. But on the cover of that book is a drawing of Alice Wong. And it's an uh, Asian woman uh, with a iPad machine on her face, and she's sitting in a power wheelchair. Uh, 
Um, Tatiana. Ooh, comparison. This conductor of the Underground Railroad had a traumatic brain injury from a slave owner strike her in the head. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Franklin Douglas, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Yeah, Harriet Tubman. They're definitely not a guy, so. Right. <laughs> Franklin Douglas. With a name you don't hear very often, very much anymore. No. <laughs> Area Tubman for sure. I prefer Harriet. I would think I prefer, Harriet. I prefer Harry Shower Woman. Tubman is a guy named Shower Woman. Would be the cousin. Nice job. And so the photo that was on the screen was of Harriet Tubman, a woman standing behind a chair leaning up against it. Adner, can you read the next question? Don't mind if I do. The second independent living career, so excuse me, center, was found in this city in 1974, New York. New York, New York, Boston, Massachusetts, Washington, <laughs> D.C., or Berkeley, California? I mean, Berkeley, California. I think Boston was the first one. I want to say Berkeley. I want to say Berkeley. Berkeley. For the U.S. For the U.S. The first one globally, I think, was founded somewhere else. Mm. I would well, have to say that's all Berkeley, too. We'll, we'll all find out sooner or later. Ben, you know it'll be fun for um, the first independent center in New York City? What borough was it in? Oh, that's a good one. I don't know the answer to that. I don't either, but that would be a good one. Oh. So um, that was great Ooh. conversation because actually Berkeley, California was first. I oh yeah, in center in Boston. Mm. Uh, I thought so too. Oh, well, and the photo that was on the screen, and I know we have people from all over the all over here joining us. This is a photo of the front of the office building here in Boston. So it's kind of a trick because if you're not here and you've never been there, why would you know what it looks like? Actor, can you read this fact about um, Boston Center for Independent Living? <clears throat> Adner? Sorry, sorry, I was, I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> okay, Boston Center for Independent Living. Center for Independent Living, C-I-L-S, a private nonprofit co consumer controlled organizations providing service and advocacy by and for people with all types of disabilities. Thank you. And on the screen is the logo for Boston Center for Independent Living, or BCIL. Okay. Anna, can you read the next question? Sure, Desi. So the next question is, the 504 sit-ins in April of 1977, San Francisco's HEW building lasted how many days? Was it 26 days, two days, an hour, or one night? And here's a black and white photo of the 504 sit in. 26 days. Do you know what ACW stands for? Anybody? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't no. know. It's a uh, health, education, and welfare building. It, 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 we believe it's health, educational, welfare. Yep. The five hundred four sit-in. Was that the area? Is that the area code of San Fran? 
No. No, so uh, 50, yeah. Section 504 was a part of the oh. Rehabilitation Act right. that they were, mm. they were mm. not, they were oh, not wow. signed. Uh, good, good, good job, uh, uh, good job, most of you. Hmm. Um, Andrew, can you read the next question? Then the final question then, activist Brad Lamas got this party to provide food to the protesters. The Democratic Party, the Green Party, the Republican Party, the Black Panthers Party. Uh, Green Party? Well, I've gone the very disappointing lately Democratic Party. I feel not a Black Panther Party, you're right. You'd be surprised. The Republican Party. Yeah, great new freak. I just realized there's not an interpreter spotlighted. Should there be? Probably, yeah. You're good right now, Maria's spotlight. Oh, okay, now I see it. I don't know why it wasn't showing up so much. Yep, and um, here's a photo of uh, Brad Womack who, uh, and um, his brother. Stephanie, can you read this question? I can. On what date was the Americans with Disabilities Act signed? July 26, 1990, May 4, 2000, April 25, 1999, and January 18, 1992. January 18th of 92. Actually, no. No, I'm going to take that back. Um, I know it was 92. Or 1990. It's not 99, and it's not 2000. July 26, I, 1990. I, I, the phone number is the American Act of I would, 1990. I would, I would say, yeah. 1990. There you go. Oh, I was right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, and here's a photo from the signing of the ADA. Cody, can you read this question? This fence became women was the severe this was disabilities including polio as entire is final and pelvis damage through the color as one Douglas do a lip I have no idea. I would say that's kind of a hard one for me. Oh. Hmm. There was Frida Kahlo in uh, this image on the screen is of a uh, a drawing of Frida Kahlo. And another interesting thing about Frida Kahlo is that she actually started to get really into art after she ended up in the hospital. So as a way to pass time, that's when she started to 
create art and that's kind of like what launched her career as an artist. Anna, can you read this question? Yeah, sure. So disability activists did this action at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. to push for the passage of the ADA. Did they dance at the Capitol building? Did they climb up the steps? Did they sing at the bottom of the steps of the Capitol? Or did they sleep at the Capitol building? And here's a picture of the Capitol. Why? Wow. I want to say slept at the Capitol. I, I don't know. I would say slept at the Capitol. Climb the steps. Uh, oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Well, guess Cody, uh, we'll see you. Cody, soon you're going to be there on Tuesday. Do you want to read this fact? Yeah. Um... Oh, much. Thirteen nineteen ninety over a thousand people went to the U.S. Capitol to demand that Congress pass the Americans with disability. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. And on the screen is a photo from the Capitol Hall event of people crawling up the steps of the U.S. Capitol. Um, Tatiana. Which major marathon was the first to create a wheelchair division in 1975? London Marathon. Boston Marathon, Chicago Marathon, New York City Marathon. I would say Boston. I would I say Boston. I prefer Boston too. Uh, I'm going to say the bricks. Like we were right. I was right. A, well, uh, a, another, uh, another well guess here. And this is a photo of Bobby Hall, who was the first athlete to do the Boston Marathon. The wheelchair, Boston wheelchair athlete to do the Boston Marathon. Adner, can you read this next question? Don't mind if I do. Geraldine Lahorn was a stage performer at this historic New York City theater, the Werber Sydney Opera House, the Carnegie—I don't know how to pronounce it. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall, or was it the Boston Garden? I'm going Carnegie Hall. That was the only theater in the lit that is in New York City. Hmm. I'm going with Carnegie Hall. I'm going with Carnegie yeah. Hall. Carnegie Hall. I prefer I prefer Carnegie Hall. It's 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 becoming my guess also, but we'll uh, but we'll uh, but we'll see. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Uh, 
lot of Sydney Opera House is so beautiful though. And and, well, and it is right. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, well, well done. Well, you uh, uh, an old uh, uh, drawing of Carnegie Hall. He, he, that's right. Uh, uh, I, I actually saw a friend of mine uh, play in his own band at at, at that stage uh, at Carnegie Hall. Oh, wow, that's and pretty have, cool. Have, have any of you went? I have not. Uh, Abner, do you want to read this fact about Geraldine? Sure. Janaldi Lawhorn. She was the first deaf-blind African American to graduate college. And on the screen is a photo of Geraldine. That's impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Andrew, can you read this next question? The Supreme Court said in rule that people with disability have the right to live in the community. On the decision, Brown versus Board of Education. On the decision. I would say uh, Brown versus Board. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking about that too. Just in blue, from the Board of Education. Yeah. But again, we'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, my. Oh. Oh. Yep. Okay. Olmstead. Olmstead decision. Um, so on the screen is a photo of Lois Curtis with President Barack Obama and the two women standing behind her. And so Lois Curtis was one of the plaintiffs that um fought this uh this case um because she was institutionalized and the Supreme against her wanting to be. And the Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional for uh, someone to be put in an institution without, if they don't want to be in an institution. Hmm. All right. Nice job, everyone. Okay. All right. Oh, well. Hey. Hey. Yep. Hey. Well, everyone, uh, uh, this this was uh, this was fun. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how to make it so that we can also see um, people that are talking along with spotlighting the interpreter. Um, but we want to open it up. I think if you uh, want to see everyone, then you can make it on. Can put your Zoom on gallery view if you want to keep it spotlighted on the interpreter and keep it as is. Um, but yeah, in our last few minutes, we wanted to to open it up. Um, I'll let the committee sort of take it away and maybe asking why people think it's important to teach disability history. So I think um, so. One of our campaign committee members want to start by maybe sharing a little bit about uh, what why they're involved with the campaign. Um, and they, uh, again, if they have any questions for our group, they can raise their hand virtually or unmute yourself. Um. Oh, Cody, you can start. Oh, uh, on behalf. It's just so, um, I believe it's important to teach disability because, you know, we talk 
for sharing that, Cody. Um, and does anyone have any questions for anyone in the group or, or the group as a whole? I don't, I just want to let know that I live in Worcester County, just, just like where Easter Seals is from. Yeah, and I guess we didn't, um, we didn't really talk too much about that at the beginning because you all were from all over. So uh, we're Massachusetts and uh, Easter Seals, Massachusetts, but we, uh, the, in the campaign committee, we live all over the state of Massachusetts. So um, if the campaign committee members maybe want to say where they are. So like, I'm in Boston. Um, Anna, where are you? I live in Acton. And Cody? I, I live in, in Massachusetts. Adner? I live in Brookline, Massachusetts. Great. Stephanie? I'm originally from Worcester, Massachusetts. I currently live on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Tatiana? Somerville, Massachusetts. And Sam? Hi, I live in Boston as well. Uh, Austin and Andrew. We live in Winsbrook, Massachusetts. Thank you. And so, yes, yeah, so we're all over Massachusetts, but this idea of teaching disability history is not just important for us here in Massachusetts. It's important to do all over the country and all over the world. So we hope you all will help us take this message um, far and wide and I'm going to put an email address in the chat that if anybody ever wants to uh, reach out or get more involved they can definitely uh, do that. I also want to bring some attention to the chat. Um, Belle commented that's awesome. Um, congratulations much luck and I hope that you know there's still time for people to join. Can I say a little something? Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan. I live on Cape Cod. Uh, I want to make this short and sweet. Um, I know that there's that there are that there's a lot of us who have jobs and all that. And the only thing that I wish overall uh, is that many, 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 many more employers out there, and I'm just generalizing here, many more, many, many employers. I don't understand disabilities and I don't care what the disability is, uh, you know, just, just, just because we have a disability doesn't mean that we're more than capable of doing things. And my only wish is that employers uh, of all businesses uh, would fully understand that more because I've had experiences where the employee, the employees and employer just don't care. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be in, this, in a position right now where that's, that's not the case. But 
Uh, I think it's really important that we spread the word and we say, listen, just because I look differently or talk differently doesn't mean that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of doing anything I want to do. You know, so I can it. actually speak for it since I have two jobs since wow. I work at CVS Pharmacy and a nurse in Somerville. And my employee, I work for CVS Pharmacy, and I'm the one that deals with the customers who are disabilities. And the managers understand. My manager understands that I have a disability. Good, Good for you. Good for I you. can relate to you because I work at Price Chopper and Gardner, and uh, my manager also understands that I have four disabilities, not one but four, believe it or not. So, um, just thought I'd share. And and also, I can relate to you because uh, before I lived in Westminster, actually, I used to live in Acton. Uh, well, actually, it's Boxborough, but it's a suburb of Acton. And then I, I, and my brother also lived in Brookline too. So I thought I'd mention to the two that mentioned those towns. Mm -hmm. Also with the employees, we're trying to get our employees to learn about disability history as well. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alan, for sharing that. Cause yeah, I think part of, I think we, we all feel that part of the importance of teaching disability history is raising disability awareness so that so that employers and everyone um, understand disability and and don't treat it differently. And so that people with disabilities are able to get jobs and able to be in situations where their bosses or the people they work with um, understand disability. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no. And, um, you know, we have just a couple minutes um, before our, um, before we have to, uh, close out this great conversation. And I just want to make sure, um, does anyone else have any questions that they want to ask the group? Speak up now. Hi, Steph. Oh, hello. Hi, Hi. I'm Stephanie. And I like to um, thank you for um, doing what you do. We need more people um, to go along with this. Um, I think, um, their rights for um getting people like myself a um a better job um because I have a disability and I don't feel like people you know care that much. Have you tried to talk to your supervisor or your boss to get accommodations for your disability? Uh, I'm thinking about it. I think that's very good because it's your choice to disclose your disability at work or you can tell people like for me, like I'm a I'm a pre-K teacher assistant. So I had to tell my job that, you know, I have a physical disability, like I can't be picking up children with my fine motor skills. And I mean, I've been a teacher assistant for eight years and I've been at my new job for two years and my job is very accommodating of uh, the work that I do and I had to say people with disabilities really need to advocate and get their voices heard um, if you advocate your needs will get met um, just you know keep doing what you got to do and if you have a voice don't be afraid to use it Okay, yeah, I, I um say uh um what do you want to say, Addy? It was a oh yeah, it was a um great uh, topic for tonight. Thanks again. Thank you. Um, and with that, it's seven thirty, so I think we're going to be ending the the Zoom here. Um, I know uh, just real quickly, somebody had put in the chat that they were would love um, resources like the Kuhu. Uh, we're actually going to be sharing resources um, soon on our website. Please email if you um, want to connect. Our email is youth, Y-O-U-T-H, at easterseelsma.org if you have any questions. Um, and I want to thank you. We all want to thank you all for coming and thank um, the dream for having us um and i hope everyone has a great night all right thank you for thank having you me everyone. have a nice night thank you for thanks again for yeah. coming for having thank, you. Thank, you. Right. Thank, thank you thank you very much. Much. you all right. have a good night bye bye, bye.